Hi everyone and welcome directly to Bear Clooney Watches Studio. Rather than uh, starting the uh, video with the intro from Bear Clooney's Cave for the simple purpose of saving some time, we are here already. And the uh, watch of this stature, of this beauty, of this quality certainly will demand a slightly longer video. Now I do want to address something before I start presentation of this beautiful timepiece. Uh, I had the intro video which was uh, coming soon for this presentation and I also had some discussion on the uh, uh, Facebook group Horology Talk and it seems that it is very hard for Grand Seiko fanboys and uh, Rolex fanboys to appreciate each other's favorite brand. I find that ridiculous and I'll tell you why. These are two beautiful brands in their own way. I am without doubt a uh, Rolex fanboy, but Grand Seiko is certainly a brand that uh, gets my attention, gets my appreciation, and uh, it is from the perspective of quality, beauty, history, uh, for all the same reasons that I love and appreciate uh, Rolex and also for its wearability and usability, which is a unique thing for both of these brands. Why is there such an animosity between these two tribes? I don't really understand, but I certainly love both brands and uh, being a Rolex fanboy doesn't stop me to appreciate exceptional watch as Grand Seiko Snowflake. And this specific Grand Seiko was a result of Grand Seiko listening to the masses and they released a new Grand Seiko Snowflake SBGA211G, a watch with evidently stunning design that has been updated to reflect the Japanese manufacturer's recent rebranding. As you can see, uh, the new Grand Seiko logo is uh, right at noon position, before it was above 6 o'clock, where the proudly position of the logo was taken by Seiko brand. Me personally, I love both. I don't see that um, this was so necessary, but I am not the executive from Grand Seiko company, and they obviously know what they're doing. I think their main intention was to properly posi position Grand Seiko as the uh, truly luxury brand, uh, which uh, they really are. And I think uh, it is overall uh, always a smart thing to position your brand exactly the way it should be. So Grand Seiko is taking proudly its place among watches such as uh, uh, Rolex, Jaeger Lakuta, like uh, uh, Omega, and so on. I uh, think that um, uh, it's hilarious how now among the actual Grand Seiko fanboys, there is a conflict on which watch is better, this version or previous one, and the argument that those who are the previous version one supporters is that the Grand Seiko move to the 12 noon leaves the empty space which creates a certain emptiness and lack of balance. Uh, personally, I think you people are crazy. You watch geeks are hilarious. You can create issues out of nothing. Both versions are beautiful. Both versions are a result of exceptional creativity of the Grand Seiko, Seiko artisans and uh, I think the attributes that need to be appreciated on this watch, let's start first with the most obvious, the dial of this watch. It is gorgeous. It's done in a layers, lacquer after lacquer, uh, to achieve the appearance of the snow-covered mountains around the Grand Seiko uh, factory. Will I be able to show you properly the dial? I will do my best. I think uh, that the artisans whose approach was to create a snowflake-like uh, timepiece was quite unique. 
Besides the dial, the other approach was that they utilized the titanium as a metal, which is significantly lighter than steel. So when you pick up this watch for the first time, you will be shocked how light it is. When you wear it, it's almost kind of strange, especially if you are used to wearing precious metal or stainless steel timepieces. Titanium is so light. And it was all for the purpose of getting us into that mode, into that zone, into that feel of this watch representing lightness, whiteness, beauty of beautiful white snowflake. Now, the other quite impressive components on this watch are the indices and hands. The blue second hand is such a wonderful contrast to the white snow dial. The define, define um, hands, uh, minute and our hands are polished to perfection, uh, achieving, achieving the um, polish a feel and finish that is unparalleled. And uh, a glistening of this timepiece and a luxury appeal is just remarkable. Now, one cool thing on this watch is also the time, uh, po the power reserve uh, complication, which you see right here. And to me, uh, it almost appears, if you remember when we were kids and we were making snow angels in a snow cover, it's almost like that appearance on this beautiful snow covered dial. I also find the power reserve, um, power, power reserve uh, complication quite handy and useful. Now another cool thing on this watch is something that at one point Bear Clooney was not overly impressed with. And I was the first one to say, hey, this is just a hybrid quartz watch. And it's not. It is truly beautiful uh, movement, unique to Grand Seiko. This is the 9R65 Spring Drive, which is a uh, quite gorgeous uh, hand, uh, put, uh, hand, hand put together uh, movement with the uh, quartz utilized as the uh, regulator, plus minus one second a day. Uh, movement that is um, characteristic and unique for Grand Seiko. So in all honesty, uh, that is something that must be appreciated by true watch aficionado. Um, I think uh, when I look at this watch, uh, it speaks to me on a few levels. It speaks to me on creativity, ingenuity, because uh, to create such a movement uh, where uh, the Grand Seiko watchmakers worked uh, to create a mechanical movement, basically 98% it's mechanical, with the accuracy that is unparalleled, uh, then this, this design that is clearly amazing aesthetics of the watch, all that is creating a timepiece that speaks to me and I enjoy and love this watch. Uh, my first uh, Grand Seiko was SPG Age 001. I have a video on it on, uh, on my channel. Take a look. And uh, I purchased that watch. Um, it's a steel timepiece. It's a mechanical high beat. And it was kind of almost like a first step into Grand Seiko, which allowed me to fall in love with it. You see, um, I was kind of saying to myself, well, you know what? Um, I will accept the mechanical high beat piece much easier than a hybrid quartz or quartz timepiece. Not really knowing much about Grand Seiko, but it got me into it predominantly with its finish and uh, dial. And I slowly start to discover Grand Seiko as a brand, as a brand of um, true beauty, history, uh, ingenuity, quality creativity. So, you know, I just want you to approach the horology with the open mind. Uh, don't be uh, confused with the stereotypes. Don't allow 
somebody else to drive your affinities. Um, open your mind and learn, uh, experience, and you make your own decisions, but make sure that they are educated. And uh, then, when you actually are fully educated in the aspect of understanding quality, go toward aesthetics, go toward history, go toward story, go toward anything that speaks to you. Uh, I think uh, many of you might take my path, might take the path of someone who did not appreciate Grand Seiko. And uh, today, I proudly say I am Rolex fanboy who admires this brand for so many valid reasons. So that's it. That's actually my presentation today on this uh, beautiful watch. I um, hope that uh, I did it justice. I hope that uh, you will leave the comment uh, below the uh, video. Give me your perspective on everything that was presented today. And once again at the end, please don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to like or dislike this video and comment. Join me on my search for perfect timepiece. Enjoy our hobby and all the best to all of you. Thank you.